What is up YouTube? Uh, I'm back with another tutorial and uh, today I want to show you guys how to um, add objectives to your scene using the uh, Horror FPS Kit by Thunderwire Studios. Um, this tutorial is going to be pretty short, there's not much to it. Um, so without further ado, let's get to it. Uh, let me turn these lights on just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, they're just little helper lights. So uh, first thing you want to do, as you can see, well here, I'll just run through it first, uh, just so you guys can see what it's going to look like. So we trigger the first objective. As we slowly walk to the front door. One thing I forgot to note is that, uh, wait till that stops playing, when you guys um, trigger an objective, it's going to show up in your, your inventory, um, and when you complete that objective, as, as I just did here, um, it's going to go away, so I'll just run that back one more time just so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. So right now there's nothing in the inventory, no objectives. Get inside the house. Objective shows up on our, on our screen there, on our inventory. And uh, when we complete that objective, it should disappear. Boom. So as you can see, that objective updated, uh, disappeared. And, uh, yeah, scary noise, right? That, uh, that new objective is popping up there. Cool, so how do we set this up? It's actually pretty simple. Um, the first thing you guys want to do, and um, since I've already done this, I'm not going to actually redo it, but I'll show you guys how to do it. Uh, go up to Tools, HPFS Kit, <laughs> HFPS Kit. Um, we're gonna go to Scriptables, and uh, New Scene Objectives. So once you click that button there, uh, it's actually right here, this guy's gonna pop up. And uh, you can rename it to whatever you want. Um, I just chose to name it the same name as my scene, which is Don't Go In. So that's going to be the name of the game. And as you can see, I've already set up two objectives, uh, which is the two objectives you guys just saw. Uh, the first one is Get Inside the House. The second one is Find the Family VHS Tape. Uh, so the first thing you guys want to do is uh, in the text box here, um, for your first objective, whatever it is, just actually type what you want to show up on the screen. So. As you can see, when I triggered this objective here, um, what showed up on the screen was get inside the house. Um, for the event ID, since it's your first one, just put one. Um, complete count, just keep them at zero. You don't really need to change that. Um, the objective ID, uh, you can't change. It's going to update automatically. So if I were to add a third objective, you can see it goes from zero, one, two, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the main thing you want to do is type in whatever you want the objective to be inside the text box. Uh, for the name, I just keep it the same. Um, that's just like a little helper. You could put, you know, first objective, and then in here you could put second objective. Uh, that's just to help you kind of remember what the objectives are. That doesn't really matter. But uh, in the event ID, make sure your first one is one, your second one is two. Um, that's also very important. All right, now to actually set up an objective. Um, this was my first objective here. What you want to do is add a cube game object to your game. So go to 3D object cube. And it's going to pop up with a, a cube there. And we do want a box collider. That's a trigger. But we do not want a mesh renderer because we don't want to actually see the cube. As you can see, if I have the mesh renderer on, this is what you're going to see down there. You don't want that. Um, and then hit this little button here. That's going to allow you to kind of move the trigger to kind of where you want to put it so on and so forth as you can see I'll just delete that um, when you're done editing your collider I, I just made it this little box here so you know the player has to walk through it you can't really miss it right um, one of the big things is you want the trigger box checked because if it's not a trigger um, it's not going to trigger your objective. So as you see, trigger objective. So trigger needs to be checked. Um, since it's our first objective, we want new objective checked. Um, I guess backtracking. 
uh, you want to add this to your cube. So go to add component, type in trigger objective, and that's going to add this to your cube object. And I just renamed it enter house objective just so I know what it is. Um, the show time button is how long you want the text to appear on the screen. So if I put 30, um, I believe that's 30 seconds. If you put zero, it's just going to show up and disappear really quick. So chances are the player won't even be able to read it. So keep it at like three or five or somewhere around there just so you know the player has a chance to see it. But it's not you know, hovering over the screen for too long. And that's pretty much it uh, for your first objective. So once you get that down... Um, pretty simple now if you want the object the next objective to complete so this is basically where you're gonna complete that first objective so obviously when you enter the house it completes that that first objective there uh, so what I did was I added another queue same thing as I just told you guys um, you make sure your box glider set has a trigger which it is uh, mesh renderer is unchecked uh, layer doesn't matter and keep it as default. I think my other one was ignore ray cast, but um, I think you only need that for jump scares. And what we want to do is add the trigger objective script again, but this time instead of new objective, it's complete and new. So what it's going to do is it's going to complete that first objective and give us a new objective that we now have to to uh, to complete. So since it's complete and new, you want your complete objective to be zero. Now if we go back, you can see that the complete uh, sorry, the objective ID is 0. So that's what's going to complete that. If I put objective ID 1, then it's going to complete the second objective. But since I wanted to complete the first objective, we're going to make sure that 0 is down there. Uh, just make sure that this number matches with your objective ID in your uh, objective script here. So 0 and uh, back to it there. Uh, 0. Uh, show time 3, that's just same thing as last time, I just want that objective updated um, text and that new objective just to show up on the screen for three seconds. Um, and for our new objective, we want the size, so you see size is two. Your size is gonna be your ID. So since that's objective one, this is objective two, you want your size to match the number on your new objective. As you can see, those are both two. Uh, right there, two and your ID needs to be one so if you go back I, it doesn't matter where you put these if you wanted to update and have two new objectives you could put one and two there uh, but the ID since that's one you can see ID is one so you want your objective ID of the new objective to match the I, size ID of your new objective so size ID is objective ID and the actual size is the order in which your objectives are listed in this guy here so since this is number two I know it gets a little bit confusing with numbers but just remember that event ID which is two is going to be your size and the actual ID here is going to be your objective ID so just remember that and this is going to trigger the updating it's going to trigger basically the completion of that first objective and then it will trigger a new objective um, as you guys can see um, the last most important thing you have to do and if you forget this nothing's gonna work we need to go to our game UI and if you scroll all the way down I believe somewhere down here okay so you're gonna scroll down to objective manager script which can be found in your game UI we're gonna drag and drop this into that slot right there. So drag and drop the objective script that you created into that slot. That tells the UI that you're using these objectives. Um, I think by default it uses uh, either the showcase or the house objectives just based on um, I, you know I'm not sure. I think when I downloaded the, uh, the FPS kit asset um, into my game it defaulted with the showcase scene objectives so we had to create a new one and then you know obviously drag that into there and that that's going to update the UI um, the canvas UI or the game UI I guess you can call it with the objectives that we're creating so one more time let's run through it just so you guys uh, 
get what's going on. So the first objective triggers, since we walked through that trigger back there. And then we open the door. That one trigger is going to update our first objective as completed, and it's going to give us a new objective there. So that's basically it. Uh, hopefully that's easy to follow. If you guys have any questions, just uh, throw, some, uh, throw them in the comments there, and make sure to like and subscribe if this helps you out. Thank you. See you in the next one.